to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Express. I'm going to continue to connect with you on social media. It is Salt Awareness Week. That's why we are focusing on our Good Morning Post this morning. And we're asking you the very important question. Do you add salt to your food before tasting it? And it is still alarming. It's changed slightly, but 36% of you say yes. That is a third of our viewers that connected with us on Facebook. Now, taking a look at some of the comments that's come through, I'm going to start here with Amelia that says, Good Morning, Espresso Family. I just do to taste, but don't use a lot of salt. Angel says, yes, I know if you it's enough or extra sometimes. I just taste my measurements. Good morning, team. Well, thank you for that, Angel. We also have Annalise that says, I put the salt in the food while cooking, and afterwards, when it's dished up, I put some aromat on my food, which also has a lot of sodium in it. Frank at the bottom says, no, I taste the food first. And I'm assuming that's before adding salt or not. Well, it is a topic of discussion, and we're going to go into our health chat but if you would love to leave a comment with us on social media feel free to do so with that hashtag espresso show thank you zoe that's right connect with us on social media now of course salt helps contract and relax muscles and help maintain the correct balance of water and minerals in your body however it is reported that south africans consume an excessive mm. average of 8.5 grams of salt per day. Now, high blood pressure, often caused by excessive salt intake, is responsible for one in two strokes and two in five heart attacks, which is serious numbers. Now, here to help us unpack how your salt intake can affect your health is our trusted medical professional, Dr. Darren Green. Morning. Morning. I feel like he deserves a round of applause <laughs> because, come on, am I leaving? Just because, yes. Good morning, Dr. G. <laughs> Good to have you, my friend. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Eat less salt. There we mm. have it. I think let's start um, helping us to understand exactly salt and sodium. What's the big difference here? Because you can get low sodium, but is it still yes. salt? What's the vibe? No, indeed. I, I think the difference is salt is actually sodium chloride. So it's a combina combination of two uh, what you call electrolytes or ions, a sodium and a chloride. The one's positively charged, the one's negatively charged. They come together and form salt as we know it's a sodium yeah. chloride. The ratio is normally 40% sodium to 60% chloride in salt. Okay. And then you get different varieties of table salt from yeah. your Himalayan all the way through to high sodium, low sodium. With your soya sauces, you'll see high sodium, low sodium, and so forth. Yeah. But the bottom line is sodium itself, as I say, is an electrolyte essential to certain life processes yeah. in the human body. You mentioned the muscles earlier on. Yes. The nerve tissue, the, the, you know, the central nervous system. So important, and also then obviously things like the blood volume are regulated by, sure. uh, by that as well. So Yeah, but once again, I mean, you have to take a look at how much you take in. 8.5 grams of salt per day, that's what the average South African is consuming. Yeah, that how is much, too much, by the way. That's what I want to talk about, because that does sound a lot. If you're going to be measuring that out, it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of salt. How much is the rec recommended daily allowance? What is right. healthy? Yeah, so the amount of, 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 of salt you should be taking in is a teaspoon, a level teaspoon per day. Now there's so much hidden salt. This picture yeah. is very good because it shows you a bit of a hidden thing. There are pretzels over there, there's pizza over there, there's a lot of processed stuff. Cheese, canned, yeah. canned veggies, a canned fruit I mean, and canned food contains high amount. Pickled uh, things contain yeah. loads of salt. Yeah. So what happens is you've got all this hidden, these hidden, source, uh, hidden sources yeah. in sauce as well, like your, 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 your sauces, ketchup, your mayonnaise, yeah. massive amounts of salt. So that's much more than a teaspoon of salt for the, for the entire day. Yeah. The amount of sodium you should be having is 2.5 grams, sure. okay. which is you know, half. So yeah. six grams is actually the max amount you should be aiming for without having the health yeah. knock-on side effects. But your lifestyle and your day-to-day your -day activities also play a role in how much salt you should be using. Yeah. So, so as an, let's, let's say somebody is extremely active, trains a lot. Like, for instance, like we Sven. had Sven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Correct. He was doing the 20 cycle. 20, yeah. so, so for him, obviously, it'll, you know, his kind of threshold will be a little bit higher. Yeah, so what, what you've got there is the fluid balance in his body will need to be regulated extremely well. He's going to have ongoing losses of fluid in the form of perspiration, yeah. breathing, urination, etc. So the balance yeah. between how much water he needs to be drinking, how much salt is in his body, 
is, is crucial. So if you don't, if, if the dilution of the salt in your body is not in appropriate uh, levels, yeah. then you start running into problems sure. with high sodium levels, which then have a myriad of uh, health complications in the body. All right, perfect. Well, we're going to continue chatting with Dr. Darren Green in just a bit. If you feel, if you feel like it, you can ask a question or you can pose a comment as well. 0214309881. He is here on standby to answer all of your questions. I do want to get into what uh, what it does to your body. What are some of the things that you can um, kind of should be looking at if you are going to be taking too much Ooh. salt. That 8.5 grams is a lot. We'll be back with DG in just a bit. <laughs> Here we go. We are still sitting down with Dr. Darren Green this morning. We're talking uh, about salt. It's Salt Awareness Week, uh, a very important topic that we need to address because there are so much hidden salts in our diet. We actually do not realize how much we consume. So if you want to have uh, a comment on air to Dr. Darren Green or maybe you have a question, call us 0214309881. Dr. Darren, lovely to have you once again. So, so just quickly, we, we do know now that uh, South Africans, we do c consume too much salt. Yep. 8.5 grams, that is kind of the, 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 the level where we are right now. What's the health implications? Yeah, so if you think about what our staple diets are here, yeah, there are a lot of bread, yeah. uh, a lot of pastries as well, but also a lot of meat. South Africans eat a lot of red meat. Yeah. Think about druivors and bultong. Hey. And what happens, when, yeah, what, what happens when they eat a lot of that? They get thirsty. Mm. We also socialize a lot around a campfire and yeah. around uh, sporting events. That's when people will put out snack bowls and snack. What's in the snack bowl? Chips. Yeah. So crisps and uh, preserved meats or things like that. All those processed foods are very high in salt. And that yeah. then leads to obviously the excessive thirst. Yeah. But interestingly enough, not just the thirst. What happens when you have too much salt uh, is that you also end up going to the toilet a lot because you mm. drink a lot more water yeah. and you think if I'm drinking more water to neutralize the salt I'm going to go to the toilet a lot sure but your body holds on to water as well to dilute the salt if you've mm. got too, too you know your levels are too high but from from losing lots of fluid uh, with excessive salt intake you often secrete calcium mm. so it's funny enough people get uh, actually bone disease or osteo osteoporosis associated with poor quality bone Sure. that as well and also can affect the nervous tissue as I mentioned in the nervous yeah. system things like delirium and dementia can happen uh, from having high salt <laughs> levels and it can affect the metabolism of your muscle cells particularly the, sp the secondary spin-offs medically are what happens to the blood pressure yeah. so that's a big one and the effect of then raised blood volume and blood pressure on all the different systems you mentioned the risk factors of yeah. stroke particularly coronary artery disease of the heart as well if you take someone that has high blood pressure and take their heart and have a look at it afterwards and cut the heart in uh, yeah, a cross section and look at it, the muscle is thickened. It's called hypertrophy, sure. concentric hypertrophy, where that muscle, from working against the, the resistance of high pressure in the system, that muscle overdevelops. Sure. And because of the thickened muscle walls, it's not a healthy thickened muscle. It yeah. actually causes a less effective uh, you know, cardiac yeah. function. But also then, obviously, the, the, the size of the ventricles can be impaired. Oh, you see now, and, and I think we need to realize that the body is such a delicate ecosystem. And uh, we don't realize because, you know, it doesn't happen immediately. You know, we don't necessarily feel those, those implications right now. Our lines are open, 021 This is a very, very serious but important topic as well. Call us, 021 We're going to be back with Dr. Darren Green, especially giving us tips on what to look out for when we go shopping with regards yes. to food. That's a big <laughs> one as well. We'll be back just now. It's my feel good Welcome back. You're tuning to your Good Feel Good Breakfast Show Express right here on SABC3. Sitting down with Dr. Darren Green talking salt and salt awareness, being in Salt Awareness mm, Week. Um, very, very important because we do consume too much salt in our foods as well. Dr. Darren, so we heard some you know, things that, that can affect uh, your body in terms of salt. You know, the heart muscle especially can be, can be badly damaged, even though that it you know, produces more muscle because of the blood volumes. But right now, I think more mm. uh, you know, on an everyday kind of note, people going to the shops buying food yes um, we spoke about the hidden salts what should we be looking out for we spoke about the link between salt and sodium as well and it gets confusing I get it I yeah get it. so what's your top tips so you you'll see on the labels on the yeah. food that you know the, the, the food labels have to be updated they have to be accurate sometimes they're so small you can hardly read them but you need to be able to see you'll, you'll often find energy in kilojoules or kilic protein yeah. etc going all the way down to so and there's 0.5 grams 
uh, one gram, 16.7 grams. But what, 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 we, what we look at on that label is, for, uh, for salt specifically, remember, per day, yeah. you should have six grams max. Okay. So, right, so you can yeah. actually work out how much salt you're actually consuming, provided you actually take into consideration a little bit of chutney, a little bit of ketchup, tomato sauce, yeah. whatever. So, uh, there's salt in bread, there's salt in, even in cookies that you put your cheese on. Yeah. The highest sources of salt that you're going to find are things like your processed meats, mm. your pepperonis, your salamis, your things like, uh, yeah. of, obviously, uh, cheese, your hard cheeses. Yeah. Uh, and people need to be aware of that. Uh, and then the sources are massive. Remember the crisps, remember yeah. the preserved meat products, etc. Yeah. But look at the label, look at the RDA, the recommended the daily, daily allowance. allowance. And that tells you, for example, how much you should be consuming uh, yeah. quite, quite often. But with salt particularly, as I mentioned, the sodium content is important. 2.5 grams a day okay. is max. What That's you your should max. Be. Yeah. Okay. We have a call on the line all the way from Joburg. Craig, good morning. Good morning, you and how are you? I am very well, my friend. I'm very well. What would you like to, to ask or what's your comment for Dr. Darren? Uh, look, morning. Doctor, I'd just like to ask you a question. I am uh, epileptic grand mole. And every time I have a every time I have a fit, yeah, I'm grand mole. And when I have a fit, I go to hospital, uh, they tell me the sodium chloride in my body is practically non existent. Yeah. But my blood pressure is sky high. Hmm. And I have finally got my blood pressure down. But now that it's down, my epilepsy is playing up. Sure. So, so I don't know if you can give me any pointers yeah, there. What's, what's the link there? Well, yeah. so he mentions three, uh, two or three different things. He mentioned sodium as a problem initially having very low sodium levels. Yeah. Uh, and that could be related to many things metabolically. It could be related to your kidney function. It could be related to thyroid hormone. It can even be a side effect of medication you could be taking as well. Okay. So let's start there. When you have hypertension, you know, hypertension, well, when you have high blood pressure, there are different causes of high blood pressure. Sodium and having high sodium levels could be one cause. You get primary essential hypertension uh, that, you, that you get in families, but you also get hypertension secondary to other yeah. organ, organ issues in terms of the hormone levels that I mentioned as yeah. well. Uh, remember also in, in this case that he would need to control his seizures at all costs. One of the reasons someone that has epilepsy develops uncontrolled epilepsy is if they're dehydrated and the electrolyte levels are abnormal, it can predispose them to having more fits okay. uh, and seizures. So very important for him to have obviously a very stringent diet fluid balance and also review his electrolyte counts in this case. Uh, yeah. And also look at the side effect profiles of the meds. How much are you taking? Uh, can the meds interact with each other and, and you know, look into the situation? Sure, yeah. So there's, a, there's a, a big number of things. Craig, I do hope that it helped you somewhat Thanks for that this call. morning. Thanks for that call, my friend. Dr. Darren, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Um, oh, wow, yeah, no, this is definitely a topic that we need a, a whole day to sit down <laughs> and discuss. But I uh, really appreciate the input and advice as always. Dr. Darren Green, it is thank Salt you. Awareness Week. Make sure, I think, if we take anything away from it, read the labels on your food and track how much salt you are consuming on a day to day basis.